everyone and welcome back. In this video I'll be showing you how to create a fully fledged multiplayer system including matchmaking, a party system, storing in game data which is all highly scalable and that's why games ranging from indie titles such as Crashlands and Realm of the Mad God all the way up to AAA games such as Monster Hunter and titles in the Call of Duty series utilize these same services. That said though, if you're looking at this video, you probably already know what it does and why you'd want to use it. So just a quick aside, this tutorial is provided by the guys over at Block Chop Studios for the multiplayer with Blueprints plugin. This is going to be a quick fire introductory video to help you get the basics set up and installed. So you will need to have purchased and downloaded their plugin to follow along. And of course, if you do have any questions past what's covered or answered in the video, or you'd like to just learn more about the plugin, then you can contact the creators and I'll be providing links for everything I discuss in the video down in the description section below. So the multiplayer with Blueprints plugin works with the AWS system or the Amazon Web Services, and it works with four of the web services, which are Cognito, DynamoDB, GameLift, and Lambda. So once you have the plugin purchased and downloaded, you'll also need to have a source version of the Unreal Engine built and installed. To do this, you'll need access to the Unreal Git repository. And if you don't already have a Git account or access to the Unreal repository, you can follow the steps in this page for the official Unreal Engine Git account. And when you have access to that, you'll need to install your source version of Unreal. One tutorial that covers the entire process very succinctly is provided by Flopperam. And again, the link for that will be provided in the description below. Now on top of that, Blockchop already have a huge library of documentation, which can be found here. They're also very active on the discussion page, the Q&A on the plugin page. So again, feel free to drop them a question if you do get stuck with anything and they'll be getting right back to you there. But when you have that done, the next thing we need to do is create your AWS account. And again, if you don't already have one of those, you can do that here by clicking the create free account. And after you've signed up, you just need to return to the AWS homepage, which is just aws.amazon.com and click on the sign in to the console button. That should take you to the AWS management console. And this is where you can locate the IAM section that we need to set up the account. And this stands for identity and access management. So to begin, we'll go to groups and create a new group. You can name your group, whatever you like here, then click on next step and tick administrator access. Click next step again, which will take you to the review page and then click create group. Next, select create user and enter a username. Tick to provide programmatic access and the AWS management console. You can choose to provide a custom password here and by default, it will use the IAM user change password policy. So now you can select permissions and tick to add it to the group that you've just created. With that done, click the next review button and finally confirm by selecting create user. Back in the IAM section, go to the users section, select your newly created user and navigate to the security credentials tab. And then in this window, click the create access key button to generate an access key ID. You'll also need to click the show button to reveal the secret access key or you can download it as a CSV file. And it's worth noting that this is the first and only time that you'll be able to view the key. So do be sure to take a note of it and save it somewhere for later. Next, we need to install the AWS command line interface, which can be found here. Check the getting started link below and press the download button to get that running. Continue to the next link and download the AWS CLI installer. Click to download the AWS CLI text to start this download and follow the installation guide here. Now, if you wanted to double check that everything's installed correctly, you can do that by opening your command prompt and typing AWS minus minus version, and you should get a result looking something like this. With that installed, we then need to go over to the configuration section to access some template console commands. Once again, in your command prompt, type AWS configure. The AWS access key is the key that we can copy from the user that we've created. The AWS secret access key is the key that I told you to save a little bit earlier that we had to reveal with the show option. So you can copy and paste that in here. For the default region, you can find that on your AWS console manager. And I've changed mine to Europe, London, and we need to copy in EU West 2. And then finally, you can just set the default output format to JSON. Okay, so the following footage was kindly provided by the guys over at Block Chop Studios to demonstrate exactly how their project is set up for their own online networked combat game. So with AWS set up, we need to open the Epic Launcher and find the multiplayer with Blueprint plugin that we installed earlier. 
We can then select this and install it to match the point version of your Unreal source build that you've installed from the previous steps and then navigate to the install location. This will be the location of the default launcher install of where Unreal is located, which should be the version, engine, plugins, and then marketplace. Select and copy the Cognito Dynamo DB folder and paste this into the same directory, but in your source built engine version. And then we want to go back out a few folders to the root source build to rebuild the engine to account for the new plugin. To do this, you just need to run the setup file as admin, and then do the same with the generate project files. Finally, run the solution file to open Visual Studio, select the UE4 option and click build, and then be sure to check that your options here are also set to desktop, Win64, and Unreal Build Tools. You can now launch the Unreal Engine with the plugin ready for use either through Visual Studio or locate the executable in the folder structure. Once you've done this, choose to create a new Blueprint project. Here we've gone for the standard third-person project template, and inside of the project, navigate to your plugin settings and ensure that the Cognito plugin is installed and enabled. If the plugin isn't installed, then just retrace the previous steps to see what's been missed. Otherwise, we can go to File, Create New C++ Class, and Create a New Character Class. This will turn the project into a C++ project, which will add a source folder inside the project folder structure, and this is where we're going to place our server target. Now we're only doing this so that we don't need to recompile the server target every time we want to run the dedicated server, which is the case if this was left as a blueprint only project. We don't need to worry though, we won't need to go into any C++ coding here. If you don't already have a server target.cs file, then simply make a copy of the game lift editor file, open this, and inside the file, wherever you have the word editor, we just want to change that out to server. And then back in Unreal, we want to create a new game instance blueprint class. We've called ours game lift server game instance. As noted here, make sure you don't do anything in the game instance class to avoid issues on play. Then on event shutdown, we want to check whether this is the server, which if true, we will call destroy and create a branch check for the success value returned by destroy. And if that's false, we can use the print string to check for the error message that's being returned. This is also the only piece of code that we're gonna be needing in the game instance. And you'll notice that they've stored some variables in the class specific to their game for use in between maps. In the project settings, we just want to be sure to set the default game instance to be the one that we've just created. And then we can create another blueprint class, this time of type process parameter. This will be used for cross process calls used by the game lift service to the Unreal Engine, allowing it to start, update, and terminate sessions. And we want to add a call to each of these in the event graph and ensure we make a call to the parent functions too. We then want to override the health check function and again call the parent function and pass in the return value. And back in the project folders, we need three maps in the project to allow this to work. So the important ones here are the game entry, third person example, and the transition map. Game entry and transition are just two empty levels. And of course, the third person template is the third person map that we want to transition into to control the character. I'd recommend naming yours the same for now, just to make it easier to follow. And you can change these when you have an understanding of the full process. So back in the project settings, we want to make sure that the game default map is set to game entry, the transition map is set to transition, and the server default map is set to third person example map. You can now open the game entry map and open the level blueprint. And on event begin play, we want to check that we have a valid reference to our game instance. And then from here, we want to create a game lift object and pass in the credentials from the AWS account we created earlier. We'll then create a search game sessions node, and here we're using a make search game session request, passing in a currently empty fleet alias that we'll be filling in a little bit later. From here, we want to check for any errors and print them if we find some. Otherwise, we're checking to see if we have a session result. If we have a valid session result, then we'll join it. Further down here, we create a player session, passing in the game session ID. Finally, we open the level, which will, in this case, be the server map. Alternatively, if there's not already a session available, then we'll create one. Then we'll create the player session passing in the newly created game session ID. And again, we end by opening the server map or the game session. Now, if we move on over to the character class, we want to ensure the server accepts our player session. And we can do this by creating a set player session ID event, which is set to replicate on server. On the event, we just want to describe player session 
and then loop through each player session result server and accept the player onto that server. We also want to call the end play event, which will check the server and remove the player from the session if it's true, and open the game entry level if it's false. So the final class that we want to set up is the game mode, and on the event begin play in here, we check if it's the server. If it is, then we call the init SDK, link the process parameter example, set the port and call process ready. With everything set up, we can now launch our server. We're using the Windows server configured to development with data build set to by the book and ensure that advanced is selected. And with that all set, we can hit launch. When that's built, you can navigate to the project, saved, staged builds, Windows server, and you'll need to add these three files for the Amazon server, which you can download again from the description. At this point, you'll want to open the command prompt again and enter the following. So copy everything up until the drive location exactly as the operating system Windows 2012 is for the game lift side of things. Then change the directory to match your build root for the server. Enter the name of your choice and set the build version to whatever you want it to be. And then finally set the region to where you want it to be loaded. For the final steps, if we log back into the AWS account, navigate to the Amazon Game Lift under the Services dropdown, you'll now see your build just here. Click Create Fleet, give it a name, and then select the fleet type on demand or spot. The main difference here is that spot is cheaper, but it can be taken away at a couple of minutes notice by Amazon. So select the build to upload, select your instance type, which we have set to the free tier, and then upload the launch path. The local game represents the Windows server, so you want to upload everything after that, which will be the project name, binaries, Win64, and the server name.exe. For the options below, we've selected 20 concurrent processes, and we've set the max concurrent game sessions, activation to be 20 per instance, and left the activation timeout at 600, and we've set the port range to the values you can see here on the UDP protocol. And then we've added a TCP port to allow access into one of our folders to monitor how the process is doing. For the protection policy, we've gone with full protection and then finally click initialize fleet. When I go back and create an alias, as this makes it easier for referencing fleets inside of the project, here you can simply provide the name and select the fleet that you've just created. And then we want to copy the alias ID, return to the project, and in the entry map, where we had our empty fleet alias name variable earlier, we can now just paste our new ID in here. Back in the projects launcher, we want to change the variant from Windows Server to default, keep everything else the same, and press launch again. With that built, you're done. You can go and test the results by going to your project folder, saved, stage builds, Windows No Editor, project name binaries, Win64, and launch your application from here. And that should be everything running for you. So like I mentioned, if you needed any further assistance with this, all of the links for any of the documentation, contacts, and anything I've discussed will be in the description below. On top of that, there's also a link for a demo project when you have the Game Lift plugin. So you can download a project with some code already in there to compare anything which may not have made sense fully here. But like I said, this was just a quick fire tutorial to get things up and running with the new plugin. Okay, so I'll leave the video here though. As always, if you enjoy the video, find it useful, please do leave a like and share the video around that is greatly appreciated as ever though thanks for watching and i will see you all next time